Okay, if you're gonna do this, the number one thing you've got to do, you gotta make sure of, is that you clean this plastic well. Uh, really get after it. If you think that just uh, coming through, cleaning it up with some simple green is gonna take care of it, you're wrong. It won't do it. I, I use this stuff here, which I stumbled on years ago at Home Depot, uh, Lowe's. I get this stuff at Lowe's. You can buy a gallon refill jug. It's relatively inexpensive, does a bang up job. I've cleaned engine blocks with that stuff. Uh, engine blocks, greasy cross members, rear ends, it does a heck of a job. Now, the thing is, I'm not joking about this. I have learned my lesson back in the early part of the learning curve on this stuff. This is something I did, uh, well, what's been now, a couple of months. I hope you can see this, but right there is a little peel out place, and right there is a little peel out place. This stuff hasn't begun to pull off yet, but after a couple of months, I can reach right there with a little flathead screwdriver and right there with a little parts pick and have no trouble lifting that bed liner off of this thing. So it will, well, it's gonna come off. So I've got other pieces where I've done the full job on it and it, I don't have that issue. So clean, 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 clean. Scrubbity rub dub bub. Get after it, get, get, get down on it. You gotta have it clean. What you're gonna do, or what I've been doing, again, this stuff is relatively inexpensive, so you can really use some. But you've got to get way in there and really scrub on it all these little side corners you can get at is a really stiff nylon bristle brush back down in that corner you're gonna have to get in there and get every bit of this thing just stick and stand there's no there's no halfway in on this you've got to get in get on get after this thing really, really well. Scrub gray in there, get every last molecule of it. Here in these little places that are hard to get to, get your little brush out and scrub it. Now, I am not, right now, just for the benefit of this video, I'm not going to really go after it, because, of course, you're going to get bored watching this pretty fast, but clean that off, get it just as clean as you can possibly get it. Here's something to know, when you get tuned in and you get started, you'll actually feel that 20, 20 well, in this case, 35 years of gummy goo, you'll feel it loosen up and and come off of there. I know it sounds crazy, but you'll feel it. When you get through, clean it off. And again, I'm not doing a bang up job on this piece just for the time on the video. But clean all that off. Get every bit of it off. Get it dry. Get it clean and get everything off of here. You'll spray this stuff here and you'll think you're done and you'll come back and spray it again and little soapy sudsy stuff like this will come up, get it all off. Then come back and do another clean up, wipe down, all over again with your simple green. Now whether this step here really necessary or not, I don't know, but I've learned my lesson on my early couple of pieces, 
but if you don't get it really clean, it won't stick. So I go that extra step or two or a few to get this done. Then when you fill it up, again clean it all off and get it dry. And again, right now for this particular video, I'm not going all at it. Uh, I'm going to as soon as I turn this off and we'll catch up for the next step. Clean, 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 clean. Make sure it's clean. It will not stick if it's not clean. Simple as that. That's a lesson I've learned. I haven't heard somebody say it. I, this is my own hands-on experience. Get it clean. All right, this piece here has been clean, scrubbed, rinsed off really well, dried off really well. And now, most of it I have just scuffed, but you're gonna have to scuff it. I, I used the, obviously, the red pad. I'm sure I could get away with a gray one, and I'm sure that I can do this with sandpaper, like, a 150 or a 180, but I'm using red. That's my choice, and there you go. The biggest thing is if down here in these little places like this, you really got to make sure you're down in those little corners. Everywhere these places are, it's got to have a good tooth for the base to stick. So make sure you get down in those little corners and everything done well. Now here's another thing. This, well this piece is 35 years old. It's the A-pillar cover. And you can see right there where it's just been directly in the sun for 35 years. The color has just really faded out of it. And the plastic itself is starting to come apart. And uh, it is really crusty and powdery where it's coming loose. So you've got to get in there and get all that powder off of there. If it's still powdering out when you do that, just keep keep going on it until you've got it good. Now, like I said, this one here I have already done. the scuffing on, it's ready to go, but just make sure that you get this stuff everywhere, get it completely, don't, don't uh, take it easy, don't slack off on any of this, get it good and clean. Once it's clean, get, get your lacquer right there, and a uh, good lint-free uh, towel. I get these things at uh, Home Depot or uh, Harbor Freight. I think that's where I got these. You can get a big old bag of them for nothing. I, I kind of like them because you can use them a lot. They're relatively inexpensive. And they don't tear apart on you. But wipe it down really well. Get everything in there. And all you're doing now is just getting the dust off of it that you just, there you go, that you just scrubbed out of it. Get all in there, get all that stuff out. You can see it coming off of there. Get all that done. And then, where'd my little wiper down? I had a little piece to wipe it down and I lost it. So I'll go back and do it, but for right now, I'll just show you this. Just wipe it down and get it dry. And now, at this point, you're ready to put Raptor's uh, uh, adhesion promoter on there and spray it. Now, this I'm not going to spray today. But right now, I'm ready for the next step. And this thing is clean, 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 clean. I'm going to put it away where it doesn't get filthy and gooey for the next couple of days. Right now, on the west coast of Florida, 
we're at about 97 percent humidity. We've got a lot of rain and storms have been rolling through here. And I've forgotten exactly what Raptor says on their site, but I know that 97 percent is way too high to spray. So once things kind of pass through, I'll come through here and do this. But once you get it, uh, and when I get ready to do it, I'm going to wipe this thing down again just before I put on the adhesion promoter. Give the adhesion promoter about 10, 20 minutes to kind of flash, tack, whatever, and then you're ready to spray. But the biggest thing is, and I can't stress this enough, get this piece clean, the prep part of anything, like painting or doing this. The prep portion is the most important portion. That's where you spend all your money when you go to a, a paint shop and have them do a, a paint job for you, especially, well, you know, at Mako or something, where they're not going to do any prep, you don't do that, but at a good paint shop where you're going to get a good quality paint job, 90% of the money is in the prep. So, so you're saving yourself, if you were having somebody do this, it's $80 an hour shop time, so the whole time you're doing this, and I know it's a pain in the butt, but just do it. Get it done completely. Be sure you get this step done, or you'll hate yourself when this thing starts to pull off. But just think of it as making yourself $80 an hour. We're ready for next step. Okay. <clears throat> now it's time to get set up to spray. And because I don't want a heavy texture on here, I'm going to be using an HVLP gun. You'll probably recognize this one. This is just your standard Harbor Freight little cheapy. In fact, this thing is perpetually on sale for $10. Yeah, even when it's not on sale, these things are only $15. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to spend a lot of money on a little gun to shoot texture. The issue with these guns is the tip in it is 1.4, which is not big enough to spray bed liner. And you can't buy another tip for these guns. If you want another tip, you're going to have to buy another gun, $10. In fact, here is a tip from another gun I bought. You can drill this tip out to 5/64. That's 2.0. Do it in a drill press. Don't use your handheld power drill. It won't work. This thing has to be dead center and it has to be a smooth, clean bore for that needle to seat in. Otherwise, it'll just splatter and leak and it'll just be crap on you. This one I bought, I opened this one up to 2.4, which is 3.30 seconds. For me, for what I want, that's just too much texture. It's, I may as well have Raptor's shoots gun at that point. So it was an experiment, didn't work. There you go. So bore this thing out, get a good, clean, dead center hole in there, 5.64, 2.0. Now you're starting ready to mix material. I'm using Raptor's Tentable Bed Liner. If you go on Raptor's site and do a lot of searching, you'll find where they can tell you, you can thin this up to 20%. They usually want 10%, but 20% in kind of a have-to situation, and this is a have-to situation. Just use regular urethane reducer. Of course, it's August in Florida, so I'm using a slow reducer, but it doesn't take anything special, just a regular urethane reducer to reduce that. If you're gonna use 10 ounces of base material, put two ounces of the thinner in there, and there you go, and mix it up a lot. That takes a while to get that stuff to thin and to mix in there really well. Now you've got a total of 12 ounces. Raptor says to use one part hardener, which would be four ounces. I don't want that much hardener in it. 
I, I don't want it to set up, or, or, or I'm sorry, it would be three ounces. I don't want it to set up that quickly. I want this stuff to flow out to sort of level. So I'm using about half a part, three quarter of a part on the hardener. You can use 10% on the paint. The paint, don't get regular paint. Don't get paint with binders and any anything in it. You just want pigment only. Have them mix it up for you. They will. This was this is Martin Senauer. They'll mix it up. It's just pigment only. That's the stuff you want to use. Ten percent. When you mix all that stuff up, hold the hardener to the end. Throw it in your gun, and you're ready to spray. Me, I make seven ounce batches because well I have a little six gallon pancake compressor which is being taxed all the time plus I've got a really small booth to spray in so I'm having to move things in and out painting jigs parts that sort of stuff and I do not want this stuff to have a chance of setting up in this gun so I just do seven ounces at a time here's the next thing when you get through spraying your seven ounces, don't think I'm going to come to that in a minute or I need to get this done first, whatever. Take that gun and immediately clean it thoroughly. Get some lacquer thinner, clean this thing out, take it completely apart, clean every last piece off because if that stuff sets up in there, you've just ruined your little $10 gun. So the big thing. 2.0, dead solid, smooth, with a drill press. Thin, up to 20%. Plain old reducer. If you're like me, you're just going to use half a part, maybe three quarter part hardener, and start spraying. It's going to work out fine. I like it. I use it. I spray it about uh, 50 pounds also. It works out fine for me. If I had a larger compressor, that would be nice. I don't. I like it. It has worked well. Start mixing, start spraying. All right. Now, I, I, I'm not going to do a video of me standing around spraying. It's frankly, it's kind of boring. And if you're even considering doing this, You've sprayed things before and know what that looks like. So I just edited that completely out of this video. I will tell you this, you're gonna go a lot slower than if you were spraying paint. And I had my fan down pretty tight, uh, six, eight inches, something like that. Now this dash, an hour or two ago, was GM tan. Uh, saddle, I think they call it, Palomino, something like that. But here's the thing to note, and I'm hoping this video will pick it up. Maybe from this side it'll be better. That might be better. You can see that it has laid in there really well and has picked up the texture that's already there. So you're not putting a new texture on it you're putting back the regular texture. That's why I use a little less hardener so it has time to flow out and fall in and lay in all these places. And of course, with that 2.0 tip, it's a lot less texture, a lot less material than using Raptor's shoots gun. So, you know, it's not really thick. It's not like it's a 15, 20 mil thick bed liner here. This is probably four or five mil, which is plenty enough to hold this together. And that's what I'm looking for. I just want the color changed and I want it locked down. And I want to keep that texture. This is how it has come out and I gotta tell you I'm really happy with it 
that is just a really good mimic of the texture. Well, it's just uh, it just mirrors the texture. It's a little shiny right now, but it's still a little tacky because again, I used just a little bit of hardener. But the color is good. The texture is good. It's about like I say, four, five, six mil is all it is, which is enough to lock it down. I'm real happy. This is a good process. If you're going to do something like this, if you're thinking of it, especially with something old and chalky and various colors, as is going to happen when you're messing around with 35-year-old cars, I would go with this process. It's tedious, time-consuming. There's a lot of elbow grease involved. But I, uh, I can't wait until this interior is finished and all this stuff is in. I like it.